Okay. Hello, everybody. I hope you can see my screen. Um, today, I will speak about enabling pay-per-use models on blockchains. And because we have um, did some projects in this area uh, recently. Um, but before I start, I will uh, shortly say some words about myself and the company I'm working for. So my name is um, Markus Hennig. I'm a manager with uh, Define. Um, and I have worked in the consulting industry for now roughly eight years. Um, originally, I have a background in physics and financial mathematics. So, Define is a, is a, is a consultancy, as I already mentioned, and we have a roughly around a thousand uh, consultants with a really strong quantitative uh, and IT background. Um, Ninety percent of the people have um, graduated from subjects like mathematics or physics. Um, we are serving roughly more than 200 uh, clients, mainly in the banking industry, but also in other industries. We have now accumulated now 15 years of experience in uh, finance and risk. And um, what makes us kind of unique is, uh, is uh, because people or consultants uh, working for us, they have a kind of um, a really kind of um, combination of uh, analyst role and the programmer's role, so which is really beneficial for for HR projects. So. In the blockchain uh, space, uh, we are focusing on, say, three pillars. One is in, in platform uh, solutions. We, for instance, have helped um, the Erste Group in Vienna with uh, the capital markets uh, um, infrastructure. Um, we also like have a lot of projects in the digital assets uh, services uh, space, uh, where, for instance, I have helped clients uh, to build uh, custody solutions for uh, digital assets. And uh, we are also um, helping clients with tokenization of assets. So today I will speak about, like, say, the first uh, pillar, and it's about uh, pay-per-use models. Um, so what is pay-per-use? So in, imagine um, an owner, he has some really, well, he's producing some really high valuable asset. So it could be like um, a kind of a, a robot uh, for the industry or also be, can be some really expensive uh, machinery. Um, and there is a problem to, to sell it uh, in the current kind of economical uh, environment. And a better approach to that is like to, to lease it and uh, to get a kind of steady um, revenue stream uh, for that. So building a kind of new kind of business model where you less depend on economical uh, cycles. Uh, and the idea is uh, to build a kind of uh, platform where you have a, a lot of users of uh, machines which are paying for these machines on a kind of uh, utilization uh, basis. So think of it like a, a typical cloud model, because like in the, in the old days, um, you, you purchase, say, a really expensive uh, servers uh, for your IT department, uh, but you never uh, really use them. And nowadays, you just go in the cloud and uh, just say, you know, uh, pay for the utilization of that. So there's some kind of concept you can also uh, adapt to other industries. So there's kind of um, different uh, use cases for that. Um, so one is like, say, in, uh, in the agricultural business, where, say, farmers uh, can lease a really kind of expensive uh, farm machinery. And by that, they can reduce their capital expenditures because say, a machine costs a lot and they just pay uh, per utilization rate. And by that, they have much more um, investment uh, capital for other things. And they also can link uh, the utilization uh, um, to uh, the costs they actually have. Um, you can also do it like in, uh, say, for uh, um, medical facilities, uh, say like an M MRT, it's a, it's a, it's a really a expensive uh, device, can uh, cost up to a, a few millions. So in instead of just, just buying it or owning it, you just, uh, just pay for the utilization of it. And um, finally, I think there was also a, um, a talk uh, by Stefan Hartmetz from Paper Chain. Uh, you can do the same thing for, uh, say, production machineries uh, like a molding press. Uh, you can you can lease them to your clients, say, in the automotive uh, in industry, where they use it for uh, producing parts. And uh, instead of you know, uh, owning them, they, they're leasing them and uh, paying um, back a, a certain rate depending um, on the usage. So it's a, it's a kind of new business models in this industry, which is already known in other industries. Um, but you have to build it somehow. And uh, this is where things, um, say, uh, getting uh, really tricky. Um, because first of all, you have a kind of, say, a, a trust issue. Because you have uh, the user 
um, which you can see, and the, and the user is uh, using this machinery here, and the machinery or the machine, or the, say in this case, uh, this, this industry robot um, is, is placed at the user's side, say in the, in the production uh, facilities, and is producing some parts. And um, somehow uh, you have the owner has to build the user according uh, to the usage data, and just say, okay, just uh, hand me over the logs and send me by email is something which doesn't work because there's, uh, this, this is way too complicated. It's, it, you can't orchestrate it, and uh, you can't trust actually uh, the, the user. So there is this kind of trust issue with uh, this usage uh, data. So and. DLT, also distributed technology, uh, distributed ledger technology, is a really, really nice way uh, which you can use here um, to somehow, to some extent, solve uh, this issue. There's still other issues involved because you have to get the, the data in a verifiable and trustable manner into the system. Um, but I will come to that a little bit later. So from the DLD perspective, you can establish this trust because uh, you can build a system. Whenever you store any kind of action of the machine, uh, it's immutable. So you can't just change it anymore. Um, the other aspect uh, you can use is that within the uh, DLT network, you can exchange uh, not only data, you also can exchange value. And this uh, becomes really interesting when you say, okay, you can use it, you have the usage data, in the same time, you have payments. So it's, it's some nice way where you also can uh, um, map payments into this infrastructure. So um, nice thing is also is, is definitely is, is, is security because you have a, you have a single system which is really really secure. Say compared um, maybe to a, a centralized uh, server because you can easily attack it. But with a, uh, a distributed system, it's getting much 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 harder, much trickier, and much more uh, expensive to do so. Um, and the other thing is with, with such a system is like audit, uh, auditability. So it means. Every transaction which is happening within the system is uh, is recorded, and whenever there is a dispute, you can just look into uh, the data and and solve your your issue. And I mean, the, da the data is also immutable, so there's a lot of kind of uh, adv advantages y you can use here. So um, what you show now is like it's a really kind of high level system. So you can use uh, uh, the distributed ledger technology as any kind of ing ingredients to to build the platform, which I have uh, depicted here. So you need different you have different roles on such a platform. So on the one side, uh, you have maybe the, the the owner, you have the user, and you have your say your machine uh, somehow connected to it. But you also may need a, a payment provider. So um, we just start with a really simple process. So the user is using his machine, uh, say in its production uh, facility, it's producing some parts, and um, the machine then uh, sends uh, some kind of usage data which it's getting from some sensor. So there's still a process where you have sensors and you have to somehow determine what actually is usage um, and send it to the smart contract, and the smart contract somehow triggers a payment. So the payment can so it's happen within the system or it can be like um, externally so that you trigger um, another payment system. So this is where I come also to later to that uh, point. And um, finally, you, you, when you have, um, and you pay actually uh, the owner based on the usage data you have feed into your, your system, you're doing it kind of continuously. Um, so now you have a really nice system where you can where you can flow um, where data is flowing and uh, where also like you have some value streams, and you can also now add a lot of kind of additional services which are a little bit um, say adjacent to the other services. But for instance, like you can just maybe add an insurance uh, which is using kind of data uh, driven uh, um, insurance premiums for your your user of, user of the machine. Uh, you can have predictive maintenance. Definitely, you have all this kind of uh, data and uh, you can use it and. And uh, you can also like uh, add a bank for any kind of financing model for, for the owner. So there's everything which can uh, come together in, 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 in such a plat platform. But there's some kind of challenging uh, challenges you have to solve, which I now come to it. So th the first challenge is actually um, that you have your machine somewhere. And the machine is, is maybe uh, have some kind of IoT sensors um, and it's collecting data. And from this data, um, you you have to um, you have to somehow compute the usage data. So and you have to do it in a kind of trusted uh, trustable manner, because before you just um, 
that's centered uh, to the blockchain or to the DLT network, it must be already um, untemperable. And uh, you can do that uh, by, for instance, using kind of crypto enabled hardware, which I have here depicted by, uh, say, this kind of small, uh, small ship here. Uh, so what you're doing is like you're collecting uh, the data from your sensors. And then you maybe have something kind of like a, um, a trusted execution environment, uh, which is determining uh, the usage from all this kind of data it's, it's, it's collecting and, and that's putting a signature on, on, under that. So the, the user can be sure, okay, there's a certain kind of way of determining what is usage. And in the same way, you're signing all the data which are entering, uh, say, your network, so the, the digital world, so to say. And within your DLT solution, you, you need a kind of a digital twin, which is then how, somehow, um, say, cryptographically uh, linked um, to your machine and no other data is, is flowing here. And um, your digital twin is, is, is more or less a kind of virtual copy um, of your of your machine and it can connect uh, to smart contract, it can uh, connect to other uh, roads within the system. And um, so the smart contract is a really um, essential part, but you have to connect it to say to the outside world. So it's a so-called like the kind of um, the orga problem you have here, but you have to connect it to the digital twin, which represents your machine. And so this is this is one challenge you have to solve. And um, the the other big challenge you have is like okay. Um, on the one hand, you can now have usage data, which you can trust somehow, which are verifiable. But on the other hand, uh, point, uh, you have to um, build the payment somehow. And this is also where things are getting tricky, because um, if you want to build now a solution, uh, um, there is nothing like, say, a CDBC or there's, there's, no, there's no digital euro uh, yet, say, or uh, anything what you could use easily for that. I mean, you, you can't essentially use Ethereum or Bitcoin because it's too volatile. You need something, a kind of, um, say, a kind of stable coin. Um, but you have different kind of options to in, uh, include payments. So one is like to build a trigger uh, solution or you, you, you build an ecosystem, uh, system, a digital euro, so it means something like you build like an e-money system or you integrate uh, maybe a future external digital euro. So we start with a, with a kind of first uh, approach here. Um, which is essentially say, okay, I build a kind of a trigger solution. Uh, this means something like you have your machine, it's, it's producing its usage data over its digital twin, and then you have a smart contract here. And the smart contract uh, is somehow connected, uh, say, say maybe to a, a commercial bank. So they, they have a kind of bridge between, uh, say, uh, the, the payment world here uh, and, your, and your DLT ecosystem. So uh, the smart contract is giving instruction and you make your um, payment uh, within the kind of a traditional payment system. So this is something you can, you can do already and we have done it already in the project we have shown that it works with a really uh, big bank here. And so it's, it's a really nice uh, first step and it, it, it works um, because I mean, there's uh, something like a uh, safer instant payment and it, it's, it's really fast um, and you can enter the market really quickly. Um, so, but the other option is like, it's a little bit more tricky and a little more complicated. Um, so it's something like, okay, um, because you want to have settlement in the same system, um, you, you're building a kind of, uh, say, a digital euro by yourself, which is somehow linked uh, to commercial bank money. So you have, uh, you have the same thing again. You have your machine, it's, it's uh, sending its usage data, uh, and you have your smart contract, which is, say, it's triggering payments whenever a certain kind of usage level uh, is reached. And then you're connecting it to a smart contract, which represents your digital euro, and you make your transfer. Um, but it seems a little bit more complicated because um, what you're essentially building is a kind of e-money system. So you need a payment uh, provider or e-money uh, um, e institute which have e-money license and they have to um, say connect their payment systems also like say we are bridge into the smart contract and you have the issuance and the redemption um, of this kind of digital uh, currency and have this uh, say it can be converted or redeemed into into say uh, regular uh, fiat currency but you also have to say say build a kind of monitoring systems because i mean you have some certain uh, obligations um, concerning reporting you have to monitor your system for any fraudulent uh, transactions and so on so this is getting uh, more kind of a, of, a, of a challenge and it, it takes uh, time to build such a system. Um, but doing so gives a lot of benefit because um, 
then uh, your pay your payment is really really coupled um, to your your data flow. So you have your your data flow from the machine, and you couple it directly um, to to triggering payments. So you have this kind of you can have this kind of instant um, settlement, and you can even think uh, further and say, okay, if you have um, a, a really good network which can process a lot of um, transactions per second, you can even have like a, a data stream here, uh, and you can have a kind of um, a value stream here. So this is something which uh, could be possible, or uh, but you don't need it for a, a each use case, but for some use cases, which be it, it would be possible. So, um, so this, 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 say the third uh, possibility you have is say, okay, um, there will be probably say, uh, an, or hopefully, uh, a future digital euro network somewhere. We don't know how it will look like. Um, it can be say something in a, in, a, in a private sphere. It can be also something um, set by the um, by the government, like um, from by the central bank. Um, and you're trying to connect the two systems here, I, maybe by an oracle or by some 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 decentralized solution or by a smart contract. So you're you're trying to connect the two systems with each other. Uh, and whenever you have uh, say uh, a usage uh, stream here, you can trigger the payment in the other system. So this is the same thing where you um, you're building. Uh, a bridge to the other system, but this is more kind of um, a, a future use case where you still have to wait um, what's happening on the market and, and, and how to do that. And so, but the problem maybe with such a system is like uh, that the, um, the settlement uh, speeds will be different because I mean you have to collect data here and it won't have the same kind of time scale for that. So this is a really nice, um, this is the options you have and one is uh, better than the other. Um, but to, to, to summarize is um, if you want to beta, uh, build a kind of uh, pay per use system, you, you have to do like two things. One is like to solve this kind of trust issue. And this is a twofold trust issue problem. So one is like, okay, the, the trust between owner and user. And then you have the problem of like um, how to trust the data how to how to trust the usage data you bring into the system, and you have to because you have to bridge the physical with the digital world. And I mean, there's solutions on the market for that, but you have to do that, and you have to think clearly about it. Uh, how to uh, build verifiable data because your data will uh, trigger pay, uh, payments. So this is kind of really crucial. Uh, uh, and, this, and the second uh, important thing is like you have to enable payments somehow. So and maybe there's this kind of strategic angle on that. I mean. Um, you have to think, okay, what you really need. I mean, what kind of payments? Do you need like instant payments? Do you need like, okay, payments every every month, like a, a typical set of subscription model, or you want to have something fancy as as, as value streaming? And so depending on what the answer to that is, I mean, you have to make a decision, okay, how you realize payments. So I have shown you three different options, but there may be probably also all the others. Um, but um, if you want to start ahead, I mean, you can definitely use a kind of trigger solution where you go into a kind of classical uh, payment system where you bridge, say, the, say the DLT or the blockchain world uh, with the off-chain world uh, uh, somehow. Or you, you uh, hope that the digital euro will be around the corner and uh, you integrate and it. it can be also like something like Libra or whatever. So I finished now. If there's any questions, um, I'm happy to answer them.